Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of No Strings Attached. Yep, this is the final one of 2019 yeah. and the finale of the chair. <laughs> we got these ping pong balls in there that represents you, hopefully, and the contest we had in the past. Grant, take it away. Yeah, so basically each one represents one of you. So let's see what happens. Find out who that was at the end of the show. All right. All right, so now that we've found our winner, we're gonna move on to the project chair. Exactly, number 12, we know who you are. You don't know yet, have a seat. Exactly. Think? It's pretty comfortable, right? Yeah. Speaking of seats, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> speaking of seats, check this out because you probably have this problem. Oh yeah. You can fix your uncomfortable couch and chair cushions in just three easy steps. To get started, go to ucprivatecourses.com. These three steps are super simple, virtually painless. One, measure your seat cushions at seam to seam. Two, add one inch to all your measurements. Three, order and replace your old inserts. And if you need any help, we have tutorial videos that will walk you through. Again, that's ucprivatecourses.com. We'll see you there, sitting pretty. All right, so the chair is almost finished. It's looking yep. great. The next step is to do the seat cushion, right? Which is cool. We're Which is awesome. At the very end of this chair. Yeah, and it's awesome too because it'll teach you how to do this, whether it's a sofa, love seat, or a chair, because a lot of times when somebody throws it out, they throw out the cushion separately for some reason. Right, you, you don't really want that old cushion. No, now. you don't. So I mean, we're gonna- It might be okay. But. It could be okay, but you don't know what they did to it beforehand. So we're gonna show you how to start from scratch without yep. a cover and obviously without the insert and then build our way up, okay? Right, we're gonna trace the platform with this material that we have here, scrap material. Right. You could do measurements, but there's a bit of a curvature in the back here. You'd be fine though if you just did measurements. It's just a rectangle. Right. But some of them you really need to trace, but uh, we're just gonna show you the tracing method this time. Exactly, and you could have, like you said, a, a curved back mm -hmm. or it could taper, and sometimes it's easier to trace it than measuring it if it's tapering. So keep that in mind. Go ahead and follow along and let's get to it. Let's do it. What I'm putting right here on the front is an old piece of welt or cording or piping. It's three different names. We're going straight across. I'm stopping right where the cushion ends. This is really important if your front curves a little bit. It's very difficult sometimes when it curves and it rounds over. You can't really tell where you're going to trace because that's what you got to do. You got to trace this piece of fabric. This represents where the cushion is going to stop or end. Okay, so this one's really easy. This one's going straight from this corner to this corner over here. Putting enough pins in so it doesn't droop or drop like this, okay, when I press down on it. So use this trick when you're tracing for new cushion covers. Okay, the front line waves just a little bit here, so I'm gonna straighten that up. And what I want you to do too is pick a side that you think looks best, okay? So in other words, we might have pulled in a little too much, not on this one, because this one's just flat foam and cardboard. I'm talking about the insides, okay, the inside arms. But if you have a all padded and upholstery or it's cotton, you might pull more on this side, let's just say this side here, compared to the uh, right side when you're sitting in the chair. So it might wave a little bit more on one end. My whole point is, is pick what one looks cleanest and straight to you, and then choose that side, and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. So, this here looks clean and straight, right? I'm liking this corner right here a little bit more than I do this corner here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line that up like this, just to give me a visual, and I'm gonna choose this side. I put a check mark on there. Now I know this is the zipper part, so I put a Z there. And what I'm going to do is just going to cut this halfway. Take my scissors and cut that. And all I'm doing is making this symmetrical. Just kind of judge where you think half is, okay? And I'm going to cut on the line. 
Okay. Stopped about right there. Now flip this over to make it symmetrical. And if it seems to be off quite a bit, which this one is not, if it's off quite a bit, like say for example by even a quarter of an inch, then just split the difference. Okay, just split the difference. Don't make it bigger, don't make it smaller, split the difference. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out here. And do yourself a big favor by putting this back into the chair to see how it fits. And I'm liking it. I think once I squeeze some foam in there, we're going to be looking good. I like the front. I like how it's working right around the wood here, right around there. It's symmetrical. S uh, symmetry is very important for sewing. If one side is a little wonky, then it gets to be kind of a mess. So try to make everything as symmetrical as you possibly can. So we're good. Now I got to add a half inch to this. So you're going to see that next. All right, so now that Dad cut out the actual top and bottom of the cushion, next step is to do the bands, right? Right. Exactly. Okay, so we decided, we need to decide now what our foam thickness we want to be because our bands need to match that. So we don't want this, <laughs> we don't want a huge hawking cushion in there, really thick, because that does not go with the style of this chair. It's mid-century modern, it's sleek. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a three-inch foam so that means we have two inch bands. We might be doing two and a quarter, to, again, to look that, to have that sleek look to it so it doesn't have too much of a crown. Um, if it's too much of a crown, it may look a little bit off. So trying to work it the best that we can, and that would be two or two and a quarter inch bands. Right, exactly. So we uh, cut around a portion of this cushion was a little bit longer. I can't remember. I think it ended right here. Yeah. My point in telling you that is your bands you want to run as long as possible if you can avoid having like a seam here and a seam over there. So make it run all the way to the back, all the way to the front, to the back of the zipper. And that's what I did here. So my point in telling you is I picked the longest point. I avoided the longest point. Right. Okay. So don't just hack off what you think is waste. It could be used later on for bands. Exactly. I use it for a band. So look, look around for where you can utilize band space or anything, cording or weld. So that being said, now I'm going to cut these bands at um, one inch bigger. So we're going to shoot for two and a quarter. So I'm going to cut these three and a quarter. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay, I put a notch right in the center of the cushion here. I put the notch right in the center of the zipper band. I sewed the front band right across the zipper band here. And I'm going to set this notch on the zipper band to the notch of the back of the cushion cover. This is the correct side. And obviously you can tell that's the correct side because the zipper's here. And I'm going to go to the sewing machine. I'm going to start about right here. And I'm going to sew, or excuse me, I'm going to start about right here. And I'm going to sew all the way around. It's the pocket. First one it goes on, and then we'll do the second one. And the good news is there's no welt, there's no piping, whatever you want to call it. So this is just a flat seam. It's going to be a lot easier. So I'm going to get to the sewing machine, just sew this on right now. All 
Okay, now I'm just going to make notches to transfer them from this side of the cushion over to this band here. And all you do is just simply fold it right where the sew stops from making that turn, line these up, making the turn around the cushion that is. Line these up the best you can. Make a small notch. Don't cut too much off. It's going to cut into your sew area. And do the same thing on all four corners. So I can see my 90 right here. Fold that over like so. Line them up and make my notch. That way I can transfer to the other side. Let's look for the Z. Here's the Z. Like that. And that looks pretty good. That's where the corner is going to be. And it should be the same on this side, and it is. You might need to pull a little bit more, a little bit less, but just work it out and you'll have a symmetrical cushion cover. It won't be like this, which you don't want. So let's get over and show this side. All right, so Dad is finishing up the cushion cover. The next step is to get the insert ready for him when he's ready. I went ahead and used the existing template that we used to cut out the cushion cover. Now this is the finished size of the cover. So I do need to add an additional inch to each dimension so that it fills out the cushion cover nice. We like to add out an inch. So in this case, I went ahead, went around with a tape measure, did a half inch on the front and a half inch on the back. Of course, you add the two together, that will be an inch, an additional inch to the front to back measurements. On the sides, it's a little tight. Uh, we thought this foam was going to be a little bit bigger, but still is fine. It comes up to be about three eighths of an inch on each side, maybe a little bit less, but it's still enough to push out on the cushion cover. And besides this thing, if it, if it doesn't seem like it fits in quite enough, we could always add on Daycron because, you know, Nobody's going to be really sitting on the side of the cushion, so it needs that support. All you need to do is fill it out. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the dots from the Sharpie marks I made. Use this big wolf. This one I'm using in particular because our smaller one does a great job when it comes to foam. It's really fast, but when it comes to those close cuts where you're really close to the edge, uh, the wolf does better. It's got a cleaner cut to it. So let's go ahead and get to it, and we'll be ready for that cover. Okay, so Grant and I, or actually Grant put on the Daycron, and yep. I put it into the cover, and put it on the chair, and we hated it. We hated it. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't <laughs> feel right. It was still too thick. It was still too thick. So it right. didn't look right, and it didn't feel right, because you're a little bit too high, sitting up high in the chair. Yeah, I mean, it was okay. It was doable, but we don't want it to leave here like that. Right. We want it to be a little bit better than what it was. We don't want it just to be passable. We want it to be excellent. So right. that's what we're working for. Right, and excellent, I think, would be feather. All mm -hmm. feather, and we're not doing that, okay? We ain't got time for that, but we think we can make it excellent foam <laughs> feel. Exactly. We're gonna use this. And we're gonna use the other part of the cut. When we cut right. it down with the U-cut, this was a scrap part. Obviously, we held on to it. Instead of cutting this thing down, it's not worth it. We'll just go ahead and use this. This is two inches thick, right? This is two, and this is uh, three, so we can use this for another project. We can use that for another project. We'll hold mm -hmm. on to that. Mm -hmm. The bands for the actual covers is two and a quarter inches thick. So you might be thinking, well, don't you like to add the additional inch? And that is true. In this mm -hmm. application, we are just going to add the Daycron on there, and that will be enough to fill it out. Because again, we don't want a high loft in this cushion. No, this style. no, we don't. We so. don't. And the arms are so low, I we got to work with those arms. I wish yeah. they were a little bit higher, honestly. So we're going to really, the arms. I do too. I really do. I think I we can raise them up. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> We're like re redesigning the whole chair. It doesn't even look the same afterwards. That's <laughs> a pad foam one. <laughs> Pimp it out with shag yeah. rugs. Why not, man? That's right. All right. But um, in any case, we're going to work on this next. Cut it down, fit it, and work it, and you'll see what it looks like. Okay, so let's use this one. Let's do it. 
So Grant and I are all finished with this project yeah. and it turned out really well. It really did. I was surprised by the red. It looks great. I was a right. little bit nervous when we first chose it. I can but, understand that. Yeah. You know, it turned out great. I thought it went okay with the uh, wood uh, tones there and, exactly. then, and it was free. So I figured, <laughs> that was the best part, right? Yeah, I figured, you know what? It works. Yeah, exactly. So, but we had to work on the cushion. Right. Okay, the depth of that. We had three inches. It was a little bit too high because these arms are so short. It worked out perfectly. We reused the Daycron, so it wasn't like we, you know, did the Daycron for one of them and then scrapped that. We reused mm -hmm. it. It's perfectly fine. And it's great. And yeah. it looks, it looks sleek and in place when it comes to this chair. It does. Now, I personally would like for the comfort, yeah, all feather. But we're not going to do that for this chair. And on top of that, it leaves a massive butt. Well, maybe not a massive one, but it does leave a butt impression. It does leave a butt uh -huh. impression. It encourages you to get up on that treadmill. <laughs> and mm -hmm. that's a problem. Most people do complain about it. When it comes to feathers, they're like, hey, how can I have the feathers, the comfort, you know, the, the plushness of feathers without the impression? And the short answer is you can't. You can't. Uh, the only way you're going to get around that is foam and feathers. There's a foam core feather duvet cover you get kind of the best of both worlds. Kind of, because it's still not as plush as all feather, no. because that will just wrap around you. Right. But it, yeah. it wraps around you for a point because you're sinking in it and pushing the feathers out of the way. Right, so yeah, there this, you go. This it, is a sleek looking chair. It's beautiful and it could be yours. In fact, it's gonna be yours if you entered into the contest. I mean, if you win, of course. And you got the correct answer and you were picked. Yeah, there are yeah. little uh, hurdles to get around, but hey, bit. someone's gonna win. Somebody's gonna win this and it's gonna last them for 10 to 15 years minimum. Even 30 if you don't sit in it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's gonna be yours if you played and if you're picked. Exactly. Okay. So look out for that. I mean, it's gonna be fun, guys. This is awesome. This is a great find. It was gonna be in the landfill. Oh, I know. And now it's this gonna be in your house. Horrible, man. Yeah. You're gonna throw it in the trash. Worms are going to be tearing it up and enjoying it. Well, not anymore. So you can enjoy it. Okay. So we're going to move on to our next project. All right. All right, guys. So we're at the moment that we've all been waiting for finding out who is number 12. Absolutely. So the people who got it right, this is the people who just entered, which we're grateful for everyone who has. Yeah. Thank you very much. We got a lot of entries and that was really cool, but these are the people that got it right. Exactly. It's Michael, yeah. Linda, David, and Stefan. And then you have Julia, Nancy, Michelle, and Don. So thank you guys for entering and congratulations, you did get it correct. But you who did. got it right? And also real quick, just a personal note, a lot of you guys are return viewers. Yes. We really do appreciate that. When you comment on our videos, it's really cool to see you guys come up again and again. So we really do like that. So keep it up. Please do. We really do hear, love hearing from you. Absolutely. Definitely. So number 12, the winner is Michael. I'm going to say your name the best I can. Jim and Z. Michael, Jim and Z is the winner. Number 12, it's your chair now. So congratulations, man. You got a great deal with this. Absolutely. It's so free. we're going to ship it to your house. <laughs> yes, yeah, you can't beat that. No. Ship it to your house. Continental USA. If you're not in the USA, get here to pick up your chair wherever you can. So, exactly. There you go. So congratulations, Michael, man. You got it. It's amazing. It's awesome. I'm really happy for him. Yeah, and if you don't like it, sell on Craigslist. <laughs> Yeah. You're going to love it. Awesome, man. So congratulations. Okay, so that's the end of 2019. We're yeah. moving on, like usual, to the next year, and we want you to be a part of it. Exactly. 2020, we have some awesome projects that we're going to be doing, unique designs for yeah. our actual chairs instead of just reupholstering. Yeah, some of them are going to be really cool. So check them out. I think you're going to love them. And on top of that, they too are going to be the giveaways. Exactly. So 2020 is going to be awesome. We look forward to seeing you guys there. So make sure that you subscribe so that you are there when we start publishing videos. Tell a friend. Definitely. So we'll see you in 2020. Enjoy the rest of the year. See you guys.